In this video, we'll be discussing conservation of momentum and systems with variable mass like rockets. Here we have a collection of particles with masses m1, m2, and m3, and they're traveling at velocities v1, v2, and v3. According to Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration, which is also mass times the rate of change of velocity. And this is equal to the rate of change of momentum. If there are no external forces acting on our system, then the time derivative of the sum of all of the momenta is zero. This implies that the sum of all of the momenta in the system is a constant. And this is the formal statement of conservation of momentum. If we look at the total momenta of our system over here, we find that at some initial time, it's equal to P1 plus P2 plus P3. Now imagine something happens, like a collision. Then the sum of the final momenta after this event is the same as the initial momenta, even if the momenta of the initial particles changes. We can look at conservation of angular momentum in an analogous way. Angular momentum, or L, is equal to R, which is the position of a particle, cross its momentum, P. We can use the chain rule to look at the rate of change of angular momentum. We get R dot cross P plus R cross P dot. R dot is equal to velocity, and it is parallel to P. So the first term is equal to zero. Then L dot is equal to R cross P. So the rate of change of angular momentum is R cross F, which is the definition of torque. If the sum of external torques on the system is equal to zero, then the rate of change of the sum of its angular momenta is also equal to zero. Or equivalently, the sum of angular momenta is a constant, that is, angular momentum is conserved. We'll use conservation of momentum to describe the dynamics of systems whose mass can change over time. We'll work through an example using a rocket to show you how to think about this type of problem. Imagine there's a little spaceship of mass m0 that's traveling through space at constant velocity v0. To accelerate, it turns on its thrusters. Fuel of mass dm leaves the rocket at speed u relative to the speed of the rocket, or v0 minus u in the rest frame. At this point, the rocket has lost dm of mass and is now traveling a little faster at speed v0 plus dv. In this example, the rocket is losing fuel at a constant rate, that is, eta is equal to dm by dt. This means that after time t, the rocket has lost fuel of mass eta times t, and the mass of the rocket as a function of time is now given by m0 minus eta times t. We'll use conservation of momentum to see how the velocity of the rocket v has changed. The initial momentum is given by m times v, and you'll note that I'm using variables m and v and not the initial mass and initial velocity m0 and v0 because using this analysis I can compare any two consecutive instances in time and not just the first two. The final momentum has two components. The first is the momentum of the fuel, which is minus dm times v minus u, and the other is the momentum of the rocket, which is m plus dm times v plus dv. The change in momentum is the final momentum, which is minus dm times v minus u plus m plus dm times v plus dv minus the initial momentum, which is m times v. The two terms dm times v cancel out, as do the terms m times v. Also, we'll drop the term that's dm times dv since it's a higher order differential element, so it's very small compared to the other elements. Thus, keeping terms to linear order in differential elements, the differential element dp is equal to u times dm plus m times dv. And this is equal to the infinitesimal change in momentum, which in the absence of forces is equal to zero. This gives me a differential equation for velocity as a function of mass lost. dv by dm is equal to minus u divided by m. Now we can rearrange these terms and integrate. On the left-hand side, I'll integrate dv from the initial velocity v0 to velocity as a function of mass lost, v of m. And on the right-hand side, I get minus u times the integral from the initial mass m0 to mass as a function of time m0 minus eta t of dm divided by m. This gives me 
velocity as a function of time is equal to the initial velocity plus u times the log of the initial mass divided by mass as a function of time, which is m0 minus eta t. This is often called the rocket equation. So what does this look like? At time zero, eta t equals zero, which means that this term looks like the log of one, which also equals zero, which means that we start at speed v0, which is a good sanity check. Then as time increases, m0 minus eta t decreases, which means that this whole term increases logarithmically. We eventually reach a pathological point where time is equal to m0 divided by eta, where all of the mass is expelled from the rocket. When we do this, we're trying to accelerate something with zero mass, so that limit's unphysical. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.